What's up everyone? I'm Matt. I'm Asami. And we wanted to give you a little meet and greet and I don't know. Get to know us. Yeah, get to know us. So, um, Asami moved to the United States in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you have with you? I came to the States with my big suitcase. Just one. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, after the first, uh, how long had you been in the States? A week? A week. A week, um, we met. <laughs> uh, so my cousin, shout out to Zach McCullough, um, is a very talented musician, and he was playing at the casinos. And I'm not a gambler, but um, it was my birthday, and I knew he was going to be down there. So I said, "Well, I'll go. I'll go watch him play." And through a mutual friend, um, we met each other, uh, and then we dated for. A month. A month. We moved in together. Yeah. And then we got engaged after f three months. And then we got married two weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had we had known each other for four months and got engaged and got married. And that was uh, ten years ago. And, you know, when we got together, things were rough. Um, you know, I sprayed lawns for a living. I don't think that's any secret what I, what I did for a living back then. But I was a lawn jockey and uh, made basically, you know, pennies for money. And uh, we lived in a part of town in Memphis called Orange Mound in a very rough part of town in a very rough apartment that had a terrible bed bug problem. Um, everything we had, we ended up losing there, but we didn't have much anyway. So with the bed bug problem, we ended up having to get an air mattress and we had a car table and a couple of chairs, uh, no TV. No. Do we have plates? We have plates. Plates from your parents. <laughs> yeah. My parent, mom, mom with the hook up there, gave yeah. us some plates and we had lots of chopsticks and uh -huh. uh, you know that kind of forced me to learn how to how to use chopsticks and then after we got married you know I started working really hard um, and I was doing a little better every year that passed in my career and uh, and we went we went to Japan and we decided when we came back we were gonna have a baby and uh, so we did and uh, Noah was born mm -hmm. And that was uh, that was great, and it was it was very difficult. No, it was difficult. No, it was difficult. He, yes. He cried for three years, pretty much nonstop, and it was hard. Um, it was really hard mm. emotionally trying to wrap our brain around what and how to handle, you know, what to do for him and how to handle him. It was it was difficult, and then. Uh, not long after that, we decided to have another baby, and uh, but it took us a while with the second baby. We were starting to get a little worried, um, but you know, finally we uh, you count your blessings, and we were pregnant with our daughter, and our daughter was born, and it was after she was born that Noah kind of started to hit the pinnacle of of uh, maxing out as far as how wild he was. Yeah, so. You know, I am Japanese from Japan. English is my second language. So during the day at home, when he's working, I speak Japanese. And I think that's the reason he's got really confused. I'm talking Japanese during the day. And when he gets home, he doesn't know Japanese. So I had to switch to English. And you know, he picked up some words, but age of three, he still not really communicate very well. I think that's why he just has to scream and cry and tell me what he wants. So that's when we decided to put him in a speech therapy. And it's, it was easy, just, just that. And he started speaking in sentence, no problem. 
Yeah, it, Noah is very stereotypical. Uh, if you ever read about like male brains and, and how they function, uh, they don't handle well multitasking. I mean, Noah is so stereotypical. I am too, and it's just it, it's it's hilarious. You know, you can only do one thing at a time, and um, and I and that's exactly how he is. Um, and then we had Lilia, and um, Lilia was the polar opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we call her Dainty Flower. <laughs> uh, she rarely cried. Uh huh. She so in Lilia's case, you know, we didn't do anything different. I still speak Japanese during the day. She still won. She started picking up some words. You know, tell me in Japanese, and at the age of two, she started telling Daddy in English and switch to Japanese when she wants to tell me something. She just handled language a lot better than Noah and she wants me to read a lot of books and I think that that helps her a lot too. You know, with, with Noah, he brought me a book and I start reading and maybe one or two pages and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> But with Lilia, she sit down with me and she want to listen the whole story. Um, it's just a type. She is more into language and Noah is more into science and math like daddy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I noticed too that Lilia really studied Noah uh, as as a young kid and so as Noah was developing, I mean, she just, she picked up on every bit of it. And, you know, it, even new things that Noah learns now, it quickly comes on to her much easier too. And Noah actually enjoys teaching her a lot mm -hmm. too oh, in, wow. that, in that capacity. And, you know, then uh, with Lilia Bourne, that was when you know, I started getting more aggressive with my career. You know, multiple times now I've had the opportunity to go into business for myself and it's been, um, it's been good and it's also been extremely bad. Um, you know, the, the, the good is, is that there is certain amounts of freedom that take place, you know, where, you know, if I've got a school function, I can, you know, stop what I'm doing and go to a school function. Uh, there's bad in the sense that, you know, if you have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning to work on a project, you have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning on the project. And also, you know, when, uh, when you're in business for yourself that way, especially when there's uh, multiple people involved and investors involved, uh, you know, we can run into the type of situation where we are right now where you, you literally lose everything. And, uh, and so it's, it's been difficult. And I think the hardest part is just knowing when you put so much time in away from your family, to only to have everything you put that time into be taken away from you is pretty uh, painful. Um, and so, you know, obviously you try and give it back as much as you can to the kids for the lost time and, and all that. So, um, but part of that was, you know, along the lines of why we decided to homeschool mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. Also the coronavirus, of course, we, we didn't know what's going to happen. So... We said, let's go ahead and decide to switch to homeschool so we don't get affected by all the systems. And part of it too, and I think it's important to preface this, that Asami has really bad asthma, uh, not like a light case of asthma. Um, you know, it's a, it's a constant daily uh, effort to keep it under control. And so, you know, part of it too is that we wanted to limit her exposure, especially because so much, you know, when, especially when COVID first started, you know, the, the only thing you see on the news is, you know, people falling out and dying. Um, and, you know, you hear all these crazy numbers that, you know, 10% of everybody that gets it is going to die. And then, well, it's just the, as the high risk categories. And, you know, asthma is one of those that did fall into high risk. So we didn't want to open her exposure up any more than, than necessary. Um, and, and I think that also contributed to a large reason of, you know, instead of being sucked into the school system and being told what to do and having it change every three weeks, every month, um, it was just easier just to, to keep them home. And, you know, they had already adjusted to at-home learning at the end of, the, of uh, last school year. So, you know, go ahead and keep them in that environment. Uh, but that's not to say it's been easy. 
It's not easy. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about homeschool a little bit because I want, I want to post more homeschool videos too. Um, you know, since English is a second language for me, it's really hard for me to teach them English. You know, Lilia is still little, so I don't have much to do, but when Noah needs help and when Lilia needs help at the same time, I, I don't know what to do. And my, my time is almost just gone. I don't have any time for myself. So I, you know, I just make the daily schedule. I did the 10 minutes break between classes. My thought in the beginning was, so every 10 minutes, maybe I can do the dishes. I can do the laundry. I can do all the, all the housework, those break. But guess what? I'm not doing that. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. It's just so stressful teaching them that on the break, I want to take a break too. Yeah, and you know, I think the hard part too is, you know, back to how, um, you know, how we were talking about Noah has that very stereotypical male brain. You know, he likes to challenge things, including himself, which is a good thing. Um, but a, a lot of times he'll get so sucked in on a, on a particular topic and analyze it to death to the point where he convinces himself that without a doubt, 100% this is right. And then it, it's so difficult for him to pivot in a different direction because he went through all the logic steps that he currently contains as an eight year old to come up with that conclusion only to find out that it's not right. It's, it's just, it's hard on him and it's difficult for him to pivot. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, inadvertent clashing that takes place just because obviously Asami's the teacher and knows the right answer, uh, and he's the student and he firmly believes he knows the right answer. Uh, and so it's overcoming that hardheadedness yeah. he has, <laughs> you know, to <laughs> accept that he's wrong and, and look at it from a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he... He tells me a lot of times, no, 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 no. It's hard to tell him not to go against me. He just always want to go against me. And, you know, he, he's a good boy at school. He listens great at school. But when he gets home, he just, he's done. <laughs> he doesn't want to listen to me. So I think that's, that's the hardest thing for me to deal with him every day. I just have to come up with a good reason to tell him this is the right answer. <laughs> and you, they, they tell you, you know, not to argue with your kids and this and that, but sometimes it's just really hard <laughs> not to. <laughs> but, you know, I, I credit Noah and even Lilia too, to how much progress they made, you know, in early development, you know, um, obviously Asami did great with the kids. I mean, cause they, you know, Lilia was, picking up on Japanese so fast. And, and let me tell you, Lilia is Asami as a little girl. I mean, just the, <laughs> the girliest girl you, you could ever imagine. It's always pink and flowers and mm -hmm. rainbows and unicorns uh, are, her, are her life top to bottom. Uh -huh. Singing all the time. Yeah, dancing. dancing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> But you know, when they we, we had them both in a uh, in a in a private Catholic school here in Knoxville called St. Mary's, and I have to say, that was one of the greatest schools. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just from from top to bottom, you know, they they worked with Noah. They knew how to handle Noah uh, immediately, and more than just handling Noah, they knew how to communicate to us what to do. And that was, that was great. Great. So yeah, we, we were worried about, he didn't go daycare or anything until um, three, four? Four. Four. Yeah. And, and he started the parents day out. Yeah. Parents day out like two, three times a week, just a couple months. And then he started St. Mary's pre-K. And of course he didn't know that was five days a week and First week, he was so happy to go to school. And after a week, he realized it's almost every day. And he cried and cried, even hang on to the door frame. <laughs> Do not want to go to school. But sister told me, don't worry about it. I got you. 
and I felt so much better because I was just so worried every day. I don't, I didn't know what to do. She said, "Don't worry, I'm good at this." <laughs> so since then, he's starting to calm down, and he started doing great at school. Oh right? yeah. I, you remember yeah. we went in for parent-teacher conference. I'll give you an example. When we went in for parent-teacher conference, we sat down, and the first thing Asami and I started doing was apologizing. <laughs> and we were just telling him how sorry we were. You know, we know it's it's just got to be so difficult for you. And they were stunned and were like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I was like, well, we know we know Noah's got to be just yeah, causing you lots of problems. And he was like, no, Noah's great. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were thoroughly stunned uh -huh. uh, to, to hear something positive about it. But they said, no, he was doing great and learning quickly. And, you know, at the time he was learning to read really, really first, fast. Yeah, yeah, first grade, I think he, you know, we were talking with the teacher. And she said his reading level is like third grade. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what? He was behind on speaking. Yeah, he didn't speak till three, but yeah. now he, he reads at an advanced level. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe it. So it just, all the kids has different pace and they have own pace. That's what we learned a lot with two of them. Yeah, and I and I have to say, you know, St. Mary's specifically had a knew how to handle the the variety of children, and I guess as a school, you know, that's something you pick up on. But mm -hmm. it's a very small school, so lots of individualized attention for the kids too, and it helps them learn the personalities and the quirks of the kids and how to adapt to it to make sure they continue learning moving forward in a positive way. And hopefully, once you know we're through the COVID climate and all that, that um, you know, we can, we can send them back if we're, if we're going to stay here in Knoxville. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, we, we still don't know where we go. Yeah. <laughs> this point, you know, we, we are having a hard time. Yeah. And we still don't know where our life is going. We don't know where your business is going to take place. Yeah. We yeah, see. I mean, li literally on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis, everything could change really quickly. Mm -hmm. So from Orange Mound in Memphis to Georgia to Knoxville, we went through a lot. Yeah, every step along the way, we've been through an incredible amount. And the most disheartening part is that every time it starts to feel like things have normaled off there's a there's a giant reset button somewhere that mm -hmm. gets hit um but you know what we at this point we kind of thrive on it mm -hmm. um you know we know that we have each other we have our family um, we have a great support network with her parents and my parents and uh and so you know you just you gotta put your head down and and truck forward just as hard and as fast as you can, mm -hmm. sometimes blindly. And yeah. you know, if someone gets in the way, they get run over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are really aggressive, one step at a time, but making sure we're stepping forward. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people think we, we don't have a hard time. I don't know. <laughs> we, we try to hide it. We Yeah, when we go out, we want to be happy yeah when we're out we're gonna have fun yeah. and and not let whatever it is that's bothering us you know whether it's work or school or whatever we're not going to carry that with us you know when, when we go out to have fun we just we purely have fun mm -hmm. so we still have a lot to go but we are not getting down no one can get us we are strong and i was going to say mean but we have just enough meanness <laughs> yeah we are strong we can stand up a hundred times we always go forward so i want to thank you for tuning in getting to know us uh and obviously you know this this channel being the fan factor uh you know you'll get to learn more about the kids and watch them and you know we're gonna we're gonna give them the camera and let them talk to the camera so you get to know them more as well and uh you know i think we're documenting this because you know now we are in one of those hard times and um it's when you when you put these videos together it kind of puts life into perspective about how 
even though it feels like hard times and the reality what's most important is that we have each other and putting together these videos uh, gives us an opportunity to all come together you know and, and uh, grow together and realize the unity and the bond we have as a family. That's the Martin family. We are the fam factor. Thank you for watching. We love you guys. No, Lilia. Alright, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.